to the extent that I am anything at all, we could consider me as a separate entity, a set of predisposing characteristics, a program that is manifesting by taking a human birth at this time. I have taken a birth into a body and that body has with it a personality. I've taken a birth into a personality and that personality is in a body. And I am going through a set of experiences which is called living life. And these experiences have a certain function. These experiences, if used consciously and intentionally by me, are vehicles through which I can awaken to who I am in truth. Let me take you through an example I often use, just another little metaphorical image or an analogy. Imagine, for example, that you have next to your eyes a little control switch and you look at another human being on channel one and what you see when you look at the other human being is a physical body man woman old young fat thin pretty handsome ugly interesting if you're a scientist you might call them mesomorphs ectomorphs and endomorphs okay it's a matrix of individual differences on physical plane. It's the plane of standing on the corner watching all the girls go by. It's that reality. Now let's just say you're looking at another person and you flick your television receiver one channel. Now you look at another person and what you see is their psychology. Oh, you're a manic depressive. Oh, you're a happy person. I wish I was happy like you. People in psychotherapy live on this channel usually. They're totally preoccupied with their own depressions, elations, fears, anxieties, loneliness, hopes, etc. And that's reality. That's the real you. And the physical body is merely the carrier of that. Well, let's flip it again. Flip it again and you look at another person and if you are so trained to be able to see on this channel, you would say, oh, I know who you are. You're a Libra. I can tell because of the... Blah. You're a Sagittarius. On this channel, on channel three, there's only 12 beings in the universe and various permutations of them. Okay. You are now seeing what could be known as the astral identity of an individual. You're seeing another plane of reality. You're seeing another way of looking at individual differences. These are three ways of looking at individual differences, three matrices, if you will. But now you flip the dial once more. It starts to get interesting. Now if you flip the dial and look into another person's eyes, you flip the dial inside your own being and look into another person's eyes, what you see is another being looking back at you. Inside an astral configuration, a personality, and a body. You in there? I'm in here. How did you get into that one? And you see what the Christians call soul. You see another soul. You see another being, just like you. No different, just like you, just another being. And that you see that all the individual differences are all of the stuff in which this being is encased. Now, you could almost be comfortable with that one, but we unfortunately must flick the dial a few more times. I mean, I must take you the whole journey. You flick the next dial, and what you see when you look into someone else's eyes is you see yourself looking at yourself, looking at yourself. Because on that plane, there is only one of it. It is one awareness that is in a multiplicity of forms. And finally, if you will allow me to flip the dial just once more, if you haven't given up completely yet, you flip the dial once more and you disappear and I disappear and the dial disappears. And we're dealing with what the Buddhists call void or in the New Testament, before the word that is, before the vibratory uniqueness, 
or why God is not able to be spelled in the Hebrew religion. It's unspeakable, unknowable, unseeable, unconceivable, inconceivable. Okay, now of all of these channels on the television set, who are you? Which one do you want to settle for? You want to be middle-aged? How about that one? I mean, I'm middle-aged. I guess I'm middle-aged. I have a 47-year-old body. It's like I have also a 1974 Dodge van. But you say to me, who are you? And I don't say I'm a Dodge van. Why do I choose to identify with this? Well, if I don't pick body, should I pick personality? I'm somebody on the path. That's a good one to be. I'm a curious person. I'm curious about the future. That's a good one. I'm a responsible person. Well, I'm kind of wild. I'm lazy. I'm working on myself. <laughs> These are all different psychological takes of who one is. Each plane, each turn of the dial has a different statement of your identity and each one is getting into a more and more profound place. Now when we come back to who am I, which channel are you talking about? If we start from the top and go on down into the grosser planes, I am the void who manifests as the one, who becomes the many, who has a unique set of factors to work out through a unique astral, psychological, and physical body. That's what I'm doing on Earth. I have taken a body to do certain work. And when I finish that work, I will drop that body. We are dealing here with the issues of karma and reincarnation. Now, in the West, after the councils of Trent, Constantinople, and Nicaea, anywhere from about 200 to 500 AD, these ideas were roughly thrown out of Christianity because they didn't make the church a workable situation. Because when you had reincarnation and karma, every human being became their own priest because it was between you and God. And for the church to keep its own control and see its function as keeping people morally living properly, it had to get rid of those concepts. Have I taken birth before? I have no experiential knowledge of that. But from where I'm sitting, undoubtedly thousands and thousands and thousands of times. Will I take birth again? Undoubtedly thousands and thousands and thousands of times. I have to tax your brain with one more difficult concept. As long as we were dealing with your body, with your personality, with your astral identity, or with your soul, we were dealing in time. Time passes, things change. The minute we got up into the higher plane than that, in the one, there is no time anymore. Time is relative. Now we're dealing with the place where when you know yourself as that, you just are. You are going nowhere and you are coming from nowhere. The Zen master says your going and coming is nowhere but where you are. Now if you can start to sense, I mean you don't have to believe what I'm saying just because it's the way the universe looks to me, but if you could empathize just enough to appreciate how it would be to be looking at the world from this point of view, if you imagine what it's like to see your life as so functional to your awakening and your death equally so, that the whole business becomes merely a process of growth and awakening and opening and deepening and clearing and shifting channels. And there is no problem about transition. There's no holding on out of fear. It's just opening.